over? Oh, it's not over until I teabag every last one of you alien motherfuckers. When I was a stupid, naive, uneducated child, I thought Serious Sam was fun. Because it is. But as the years went on, I saw countless re-releases of Serious Sam. Lots of these re-releases would be seen in the bargain bin of Walmart or even the odd chain department store. It was almost always in the cheap jewel case for $9.99 or something like that, and would be fraternizing with the likes of Clive Barker's Undying, Microsoft Flight Simulator, or some Mech Warrior game, just occupying budget game retail space all over North America. For a while, I'd stopped paying attention to the series, as my fixation was now on games with bullet time or ragdoll physics, and Serious Sam, at least in my memory, was just an outdated horde shooter in the spirit of games like Painkiller or Will Rock. Shout out Will Rock for having the nicest modeled pistol of 2003. Fast forward to 2023, and as a stupid, naive, slightly more educated man, I felt the itch for an old school shooter after playing the likes of Quake and Turok remasters. I thought to myself, yeah, I did enjoy the Serious Sam games back in the day, and the whole collection is on sale. So I stole my mom's credit card and purchased the Serious Collection on PS5, knowing damn well that Sony won't allow refunds. After playing through the whole thing, I felt I could easily let a video write itself due to just how fucking impressed I was with this whole collection and for how much it made me feel like an absolute idiot for passively ignoring the series franchise all these years. Well, let me begin by saying Serious Sam Collection was released on November 17th, 2020 on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. An effort developed by creation team Crow Team and published by Devolver Digital. I played through this entire collection running the PS4 version on a PS5. What you get here is quite a bountiful collection of Serious content, including all of Serious Sam First Encounter, Serious Sam Second Encounter with Legend of the Beast DLC, and Serious Sam 3 BFE, including Jewel of the Nile DLC. So essentially you're getting around 52 levels here, if my primary school math adds up properly. And not only do you get all of these levels in fun separate campaigns, but all three games are now running in the Serious Engine 3 and look beautiful, or at least as beautiful as Desert Ruins can look. They all run beautifully as well. The graphics options allow for a performance mode or a fidelity mode, and of course you know I use the performance mode. It feels like it runs at a steady 60 FPS despite the massive destructive carnage constantly on screen. The fidelity mode felt like a huge downgrade and made the games feel slow, especially the first two encounters where, canonically, Sam can't sprint yet. And oh yes, in Serious Sam 3 BFE, Sam can now sprint, and it's so nice to be able to zip around the battlefield, whether it be in a firefight or even just for backtracking purposes, like when my dumbass misses the most obvious glowing keys and wastes 10 minutes searching anyway. But just keep it set to that performance mode and you'll be fine. Another one bites the dust! All three encounters control brilliantly. As I said before, I am playing on the PS4 version on the PS5 using the DualSense controller, and it feels fantastic. The old school controls remind me of Quake because of how fluid and precise they are. They even manage to make platforming fun. In a first person game. They often don't take full advantage of how well the games do control, especially BFE. And even though Serious Sam is known for its flat level design, I would love to see what they could do with more verticality in the levels, as long as they still allow for maximum circle strafing. There's a handful of levels that use wacky gimmicks like magnetic gravity to pull you into spikes, or have a bouncy floor while enemies attack you, or even rotating platforms. With how flat the game is 90% of the time, it almost sometimes reminded me of Doom or Wolfenstein where you only need to worry about the horizontal axis, because apart from a couple snipers on high perches, there's only so many times you need to look up and down. It is delightfully old school, and in this case, I love it. In the first encounter, Sam goes to many places, including, but not limited to, ancient Egyptian temples, temple interiors, valleys, sandy dunes, and of course pyramids. For those unfamiliar, Sam begins a level, and usually your task is to make it from point A to point B while killing everything in between. Other tasks can include completing challenge rooms, or having to find keys, tablets, or other ancient artifacts to progress. Usually the objective is there more for the sake of appearances, because what you will be doing 80 to 90% of the time is just killing hordes of enemies. Seriously bad. The magic of Serious Sam lies in its enemy prioritization. 
Memorizing enemy attack patterns and managing threats is the name of the game, and after playing for a while, you will know which tactics work best for any given situation. First Encounter has a beautiful art style, and despite the bright colors, everything does have a realistic-ish look to it due to it being brought over to the Serious Engine 3. It all works though, and the enemies do reflect that. First Encounter features 17 enemies, and even though the enemies range from big face with limbs to PTSD-inducing headless kamikazes, they do all feel like they come from the same cohesive universe. Other famous enemies include big homing ball reptiloids, Syrian wearables, biomechanoids, clear skeletons, and more. This whole crew of enemies works so well in hitting you from all sides while coming at you from mostly the x-axis, but it's easy to let yourself get overwhelmed when some of the enemy tactics start really synergizing together to fuck me up. I love confidently rushing into battle only to have to continuously shoot while strafing backwards once I realize how many enemies are coming my way. The weapons are always a highlight in the Serious Sam games and First Encounter exemplifies that pretty well. You get 9 guns here and a knife that's actually useful. First up with the guns though is the accurate but somewhat slow firing revolvers. Shortly after you pick up one you'll find another and from that point on you can dual wield them. These are good as a last resort but as soon as you get almost any other gun or ranged option you will upgrade. Next up is the shotgun and double barrel shotgun. These are textbook examples of video game shotguns and with a decent range plus a predictable spread you can rely on these guns for most any situation. After that is the Thompson aka Tommy gun which has legitimately no recoil and is like firing a machine rail gun with how accurate the thing is. Perfect until you find the minigun and then when it comes to crowd control the minigun will be your best friend. After, or potentially before that, you'll get your hands on the rocket and grenade launcher. Both of these shoot explosives and the rocket's better for straight shots and strafe fire, whereas the grenade launcher requires you to aim up a bit to compensate for the slight drop. Very fun once you get the hang of it though. Last you will find the laser gun and the cannon. The laser gun is great and fires fast and does good damage, but if you want real damage, bust out the actual cannon and destroy most enemies in one hit. The thing is so fun because even tapping the fire button will lob out a cannonball capable of destroying most low tier enemies, but if you charge it for a second or two, it will blast way further and potentially do more damage. I have not confirmed this, but it feels like it does. Some of the most fun in the series is to aim for something very specific and then nail it from across the map. Is to play conservatively. Hug the rail. It won't go in, but you set yourself up for an easy deuce. Oh, well, huh? It went in. Good shot, Totsky. So yes, they nailed the gameplay in Serious Sam First Encounter, and I'm happy to say that it seemed they just added to it for Second Encounter. For starters, Second Encounter follows the gameplay of First pretty closely in that you'll be doing the same kind of thing in Second Encounter, but now there's more enemies, more guns, and more traps. More enemy tactics to be aware of and take into consideration within a sliver of a moment's notice. The second encounter adds eight enemies to the roster, including the Zorgs, the Zumbles, the fan-favorite Cucurbitos, just to name a few. These additions, along with new weapons like the insanely powerful Sniper Rifle, the incredibly economic Flamethrower, and the Serious Bomb, really enhance what was already a seriously impressive arsenal. Including the DLC, there's 18 levels in the second encounter, and I would be a lying man if I said I enjoyed all of them. However, I did enjoy 95% of what is on offer here. Despite the aforementioned flatness, Crow Team did spice things up with a bit more vertical planes and inclines than I expected. Also, the swimming sections here were actually decent and didn't make me want to drown, so that's pretty good. Again, you'll mostly be traveling through big valleys, combat-sized courtyards, and of course ancient temples of the rugged outdoors. While on your travels, you'll probably notice secrets or somewhat hidden items around the maps. Sometimes these items are obvious and you'll spot them from across the room, then it's just a matter of finding the path there. Other times, a wall texture will be one shade darker, subtly indicating you can blow it up and keep whatever's inside. Either way, the secrets are fun and I just wish there was more of them. And now, on to the biggest surprise since I found out I was only birthed so my parents could get a down payment for a house. Get ready for this one. Serious Sam 3 BFE is a misunderstood masterpiece sat atop the same ill-crafted pedestal that holds up Doom 3. And what I mean by this is that once you get past the opening levels of the game, it is a fucking blast. I'm serious. I can remember 12 years ago when it came out and all I could see and hear was people saying, Oh, Serious Sam's like COD now. There's, there's sprinting and ADS reloading and everything's gray and brown like a modern military shooter. Now, granted... There's a lot of brown in the game, but I would say that is acceptable due to the locations in Egypt Sam visits. 
like Cairo, the Sphinx, deserts, underground temples, and destroyed ruins. The levels all look great, and that's before they even started using 4K textures like in later games, Serious Sam 4 and the Talos Principle. Serious Sam 3 goes for a more realistic look this time, and I think Crow Team pulled it off. At first it did look generic to me, but the longer you play, the less you notice level imperfections and more you start to realize the insanely addictive gameplay is why anyone plays these games in the first place. When it comes to the enemies in Serious Sam 3, you will see some familiar faces, but Crow Team have also stirred the virtual pot here by adding in new enemies like the Witch Bride, the Techno Polyp, and let's just say the Doom-inspired enemies. All the enemies work on an individual level, and when even slightly coordinated, can pose quite a challenge on any difficulty higher than easy. It was super fun learning the enemy attack patterns and what their weaknesses were through trial and error. Once you know what guns work best on which enemy, you can have a great time managing your ammo and shooting early because you've learned how to anticipate enemy movements. But strategy means nothing if you don't have badass weaponry. And once again, from an outside perspective looking in, this game's weapon roster looks generic as fuck at first. You see the sledgehammer, the deagle, the admittedly killer looking shotgun, the nearly unchanged double barrel shotgun, and then to top off the metaphorical cake of modernity, you get the most 2010s looking ass assault rifle imaginable. Then something magical happens. The game starts giving you ammo and swarming you with enemies forcing you to use the weaponry, and in the heat of battle you start to realize these weapons are more about utility and usability rather than super unique over-designed weapon models. Once you've accepted those boring guns, the game decides, okay, now you can have some of the more fun weapons that Sam's known for, like the mini gun, the laser gun, the eternally impressive cannon, and my absolute favorite, a new A24 Devastator, which is an automatic shotgun modified to fire explosive rounds. This thing is amazing. It looks like a mix of an AA-12 and a striker, or perhaps some concept shotgun that I'm unaware of, but the explosives that come out of this thing are amazingly accurate, and as soon as you hit the trigger, the target is being impacted. That is why I love this thing about 10 times more than the rocket launcher. With the rocket launcher, you have to wait for the rocket to make impact, which gives the enemy time to get out of the way. With the Devastator though, there is no wait time, and with it having a particularly fast rate of fire, it all just adds up to create a perfect weapon. And it has a scope, so you can snipe enemies with an explosive auto shotgun. If that sentence alone doesn't sell you on this game, then I don't know what will. Anyways, I should mention here that each game in this collection has its own share of boss fights. None of them blew me away, and some of them actually detracted from the experience, but I'm glad they tried, and I will admit that they got better by Serious Sam 3. But 19 times out of 10, I would rather just go up against some super crazy slaughter map with thoughtful enemy placement instead of a half-baked boss fight where the boss is just a palace swap enemy scaled up. But I digress, because in Serious Sam 4 it also looks like they maybe finally got the boss fights right. And after playing this collection extensively, I can say that even though the first and second encounter will always have my love and respect, Serious Sam 3 BFE is the one that I would bug my friends to play and would recommend to internet strangers online. I got this collection on sale for $14.99 Canadian, whereas it is regularly $39.99 Canadian. I would have still been happy with my purchase had I paid full price, but I see this collection go on sale quite often, and I didn't really want to drop 60 bucks on Serious Sam 4 and Siberian Mayhem unless I was absolutely sure I still found the formula fun. Turns out the formula is still virtual crack cocaine because I'm ready to skip work to play and I'm itchily craving more. There's a ton of value here with three campaigns and two DLCs. There's also a survival mode, split screen, and online multiplayer. So I would say it's undebatable. Whether it's on sale or not, having the convenience of everything in one place totally justifies the price tag, not to mention the visual overdue upgrade of the first and second encounter. Honestly, it's hard to find faults with this collection. Some might say the absence of Serious Sam 2 might be a negative, but since that game looked a bit too cartoony and superhero-y for my taste, I never really had an interest in playing it. Oh, actually, I do have one criticism. Why is this game only available digitally? Aside from the visual upgrades, the newest material present in the collection is from 2012, so why couldn't Devolver just put this out physically? Even if it has to be through someone like Limited Run or Special Reserve Games, I'm sure a lot of people would buy it, whether that be for the nostalgia, or even for people like me who never tried out BFE and love the idea of all three games in one consistent package. The only thing I would like to see added in a future Serious Sam game would maybe be like a separate roguelike mode or something where the levels can stay the same, but switch up enemy placements and add in more guns and power-ups, then randomize that too, and 
Then you'll have an addictive, progressively challenging survival mode. Kind of like a 3D enter the gungeon, but with no procedural levels. All that being said, there is so much more I could go into detail about here, but if what I've said sounds even the least bit entertaining, then I can promise you'll probably love this game. So to address the title of my own video yet again, I will have to say the Serious Sam Collection is definitely worth playing. Whether you're an OG fan who just wants to play with the new visual enhancements, or a brand new fan who wants to get caught up on the series. Please let me know in the comments if you played Serious Sam back in 2001, or did you get into the franchise later with one of the console games? Or was this collection your introduction to the series? Or did you find it in a bargain bin? I just would love to know because Serious Sam games are great. I'm still excited that I haven't played Serious Sam 4 or Siberian Mayhem yet. Um, might do a video on those if they turn out really good. Thanks to all the new, old, and future subscribers. I appreciate all the likes and comments. If there's a classic game or modern game that you'd like to see me cover, drop it in the comments and I'll see if there's anything I feel I can add to the discussion with. Thanks again. Oh, I need a vacation.